thanks for selecting me for a short talk. I'm a postdoc uh, researcher in Institute Curie working with Patricia Vassero. I'm working in a collaboration with Daniel Levy and Maxim Daum from Institute Curie. I'm going to introduce you uh, my ongoing work on conformational dynamics related distribution on membrane. It's a crosstalk between conformation dynamic of transmembrane protein and biophysical properties of the membrane such as curvature or tensions. As we all know that the uh, cell membranes are two dimensional pseudo uh, seed in, uh, in which uh, transmembrane proteins are embedded or uh, peripheral membrane proteins. <coughs> Some are transmembrane proteins such as ABC transporters are the major class of I'm among the major class of the transporters involved in transporter activity, lipid flipases activity. Mostly they are involved in a multi-drug resistance in a cancer cell, especially also they are resistant to the bacterial cell. I'm working with the bacterial ABC transporter, which has a open conformation. It ATP driven conformational change induces or export the drug which has open conformation, ATP binds, closes, and then the drug translocated outside the cell. So it has a two, uh, two uh, shape, one is a conical, one is a cylindrical. What happens when protein goes in the conformational dynamics inside the membrane? It means that the transmembrane part <coughs> motion is conveyed to my bilayer. So bilayer curvature is also changing upon dynamics. So what happens or what is a crosstalk when the conformation change is happening to the membrane and what happens when we have a certain membrane biophysical fixed parameter to the conformational dynamics. So it's a both crosstalks. Recently uh, in uh, Daniel uh, Levy group has shown that the open conformation which is a conical has a spherical arrangement. Uh, uh, they form ring like structure. Whereas when you inhibit uh, by ortho uh, cycle get arrested, ATP cycle, and you have a cylinder uh, shape protein, you usually end up getting a ribbon like structure. So what happens here that whenever there is a protein inclusion which has a curvature in a conical shape, you have a membrane strain. Whereas when the protein is having a cylindrical shape which has no curvature, they have no curvature, uh, uh, membrane strain. Usually, so the conformational chains from conical, cylindrical, and I'm going to talk what is on the effect of the membrane. So a study, a uh, uh, so bit about the physics. Membrane is a flat membrane. You can have a bending, uh, you can define the bending of the membrane. When you have insertion of the protein, then this spontaneous curvature induced by the protein comes into the play. <coughs> and this bending energy you can uh, reduce uh, as uh, effective spontaneous curvature of protein is uh, derive the recruitment of the protein in the curved surface to minimize the bending energy of the membrane. And that's dependent on, that's how the curved protein try to enrich into the curved membrane. And that's it derived the membrane curvature to protein sortings of the curved uh, molecules like conical transmembrane proteins or helical insertions. Our lab uh, developed a tool to study how we can uh, play around the membrane curvature and protein sorting. We grow a giant unilamellar vesicles. This is a minimal in vitro reconstituted systems in a purified uh, uh, minimal uh, uh, components where you have a lipid uh, membrane, you reconstitute your protein and you pull the tube, nanotube with the optical tweezer and you can play, play around. Uh, you have the almost flat surface, you have a curved surface you can go from 100 nanometer to 10 nanometer. You can control the membrane tensions, you can play around with the force. So this is a very good system and we can calculate the protein enrichment from flat to the curved surface. 
Our lab has shown that the, the KVAP, which is a conical shape, has a preference for the curved surface, whereas the equiporin, which is a cylindrical in shape, doesn't have any preference for the flat or the curved surface. But what happens that this, the, the protein has the both shape, uh, conical, and it's going in a dynamic state. So, so I'm going to take uh, open conformation, closed conformation, and in dynamic state. Let's see what happens. But first, I need to reconstitute my protein. Uh, we reconstituted open conformation. This is the most challenging task. Uh, and then we reconstituted the closed form conformation. I want to remind here that when we do the reconstitutions by electroformation, we usually having a both leaflet or uh, symmetric reconstitutions of the protein in both case. So I'm going to use this system, symmetric reconstituted system. Let's talk about the closed conformation, which we got it in presence of orthovanadate. This is the fixed conformation. We reconstituted this protein. We pull the tube and we started increasing the tension. You can see from the movie. When we increase the tension, we modulate the radius. And as we modulate the radius, you can see here that the protein is sorting. There is no protein. As you <coughs> increasing the tension, you are modulating, decreasing the radius, and then the protein sorting is started. So relative enrichment calculated and then the radius we calculated from the fluorescence we can't calculate directly from the tension there is a relation from tension to the radius but we have the protein so the correlation doesn't go very well and we plotted our protein enrichment versus curvature and it depend on the protein density on the surface first and also it protein enrichment has a curvature preference around 20 nanometer here. So lesser the protein density on the surface, easier to flow through the neck. So we have uh, almost uh, protein is flowing from flat surface to the curved surface, lipid is flowing from outside. So there is a mixing and this allows the reduction in bending energy due to the spontaneous curvature that follows. And after the uh, <coughs> fitting our curve with the model, we deduced the curvature of the protein around inverse of 6 nanometer. Initially, uh, we presume that the protein is cylindrical, but it's not cylindrical. It has a some spontaneous curvature. And this goes well with the crystal structure of the other ABC transporter. And so here, what we propose is, that the protein which are inside out are sorting out into the tube, which has a preferred curvature from the inside. And let's take an example of the open conformation. Here I am not, I pull the tube and I wait it for 15 minutes. I am not changing any tension. I am not modulating my radius. Protein itself modulating it sorts, uh, in, it enriches to the curved surface once you provide, and it remodulate the radius, and it it reaches up to thirty nanometer. So this almost enrichment to the tube is almost thirty time, and it automatically modulate from hundred nanometer to thirty nanometer. Always it reaches the thirty nanometer. You can see here, sometime you have huge clusters and phase segregation, there might be. So here the protein is sorting which are outside to the leaf light. Here the protein is not sorting from inside. And here our curvature for this one is 30 nanometer. From the previous cryo EM image, they came up with a radius of 15 nanometer. So you have to keep in mind that this radius which we are calculating, which is this transmembrane domain and interplay of the lipid bilayer. This is coming from the, the extracellular domain also. 
So we have to keep in mind. There might be protein-protein interaction. We are not ruling out because we have a huge, uh, we don't know is it a cluster or not. And there is a crowding effect because we have almost 50 times uh, enrichment in the tube. Now let's take an example of ATP, uh, ABC transporter dynamics where in presence of ATP, you can see when it's open, there is a one curvature. When it's closed, then you have another curvature. So the sign of the curvature, uh, membrane curvature is changing upon the ATP cycling. So in this experiment, what I did it, I pulled the tube in open conformation. There is a pr protein enrichment and then I added the ATP on the tube from here. And then what uh, we observed that the protein which was enriched in the tube has no, uh, they just went back to the flat surface. And this is, you can see with the, and this decreases with the time and then it goes to a steady state. So in dynamic state, our protein, uh, you have to remember that we have a symmetric reconstitution. So when I add the ATP, only outside uh, molecules are in a dynamic state. Inside molecules are open always. So, and when I add, usually this has, uh, when, when they are in the tube, <coughs> outside uh, protein having, uh, is in the wrong side. It doesn't have a preferred curvature, so they move to the side. And the good part is, it's impossible to check in this uh, giant intramolar vesicles the activity of the protein. So here we we shown that the protein is active first. In conclusion, I want to say that the ABC transporter uh, has a dynamic, uh, which is the closed conformation has a membrane curvature around uh, inverse of 90 nanometer. It has a conical shape, it's uh, not a cylindrical shape. Apo form modulates the membrane curvature by itself and it reaches almost to 30 nanometer. My protein is active and it's in dynamic state uh, because of the flexibility and uh, uh, negative curvature preference, they move out to the surface. And this is, so BMRA, in my experiment, we, uh, I propose that the BMRA stay longer in a post hydrolytic conformation during the cyclic state. And our observation is orthogo, uh, orthogonal to the rest of the experiments. They propose is that the BM, uh, ABC transporter usually stays in open conformation uh, uh, longer time. Thanks to Patricia Vassero, to our groups and the funding agencies. And also, I want to mention the Daniel, who, Suzine, who is preparing the proteoliposome, and also the other collaborator, Maxim Dam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have time for other questions. So, what would happen if you? Uh, drive the ATP hydrolysis inside of the GUV by, let's say, optical methods, right? And cage ATP. Since you're adding the ATP from inside yeah. rather than from outside. So one is the technical part. Uh, when we are, okay, when, uh, when I'm going to add the ATP inside, then Mm, the protein which are uh, going to cy uh, cycle uh, into the inner leaflet of the bilayer. In that case, they have the wrong preference of the <coughs> curvature. So usually, they will just So, in this case, if, if uh, they will uh, they will start pumping out some of them. Oh, there is a physics also. There is a 
they will cluster first. That's for sure because uh, there are two, uh, not all the protein are going to be synchronized uh, in one conformation. So probably uh, one conformation will derive, uh, like population of the conformation will derive to have a cluster. So we will have a two sort of clusters. But again, it's in a dynamic state, so it's very hard to say what's going to happen. Frankly. <laughs> I think there was never an Alenka. We can have two questions. <laughs> All right, Alenka. Um, no. Is there any evidence that in the cell you have some sorting based on like the conformational state of the, or the state of the protein? In, in cell, in okay, in vivo observations. Uh, you, uh, there are some of the observations where you have the curved membranes like uh, uh, you have some, some of the transporters there and uh, they are the curved membranes so they usually but as such there is no direct evidence that uh, the transporter are clustering. It is just a theoretical model proposed in 86 by and that says that the pro if the protein are curved they will cluster. So that is a logical conclusion in physics that if they are curved they will cluster. So you had a question? Oh yeah, so <laughs> around the same line, so what is it the implication for in vivo because there is not, what is the density of this protein in normal cells and there will be other normal cells, so what can you think about what is the physiological importance of this, if there is a immediate. So, uh, when the cell is in dynamic state you have a lot of curved surfaces like uh, whenever the cell is dividing or you have the producer of the cells or uh, so usually I am not correlating my concentration with the in vivo but the, the sorting at the curved surface is in sense that it need a transport because this, uh, these ABC transporter are the lipid flippases also. So they usually would cluster at the neck or the, the curved membrane and depending on the scenario they want to have export of the molecules or mm -hmm. metabolites or anything they will do that functions or even if in the curved membrane people propose is that the lipid need to be flipped they do these functions properly so mm -hmm. this is but I am not correlating the concentration in vitro with I the in vivo. No, but it's hard because yes. in, in the cell there will be also not just one protein in the membrane, yes. it will be surrounded yes. with other yes. proteins. Yes. But each one will want to have its own curvature. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll